Coach, how have things gone so far as you've gone through spring practice with this group of slot backs? Uh, things are going extremely well. You know, you have your your normal growing pains when you're putting in a new offense and with the new terminologies. We do, we're doing some things that are a little different, but, um, you know, extremely pleased where we're at right now with, with the slots. We call them the snipes. That's their code name, short for the elite snipers. But, uh, you know, they've been picking things up and practicing hard for me. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm pleased where we're at right now. What did you think when Coach decided to come here and – uh, suggested that uh, maybe you uh, come along with them. What, what, what did you think about that? I was taken back at first uh, because I was the associate head coach at Mercer. And, you know, we had talked about maybe taking over that job. And when he called and told me he had this opportunity, you know, I was extremely excited for him. And, you know, the next words I thought he was going to say to me were, you know, I want to, you know, recommend you for <laughs> to be the next head coach. But he said, I want you to come with me. And, uh, you know, I kind of paused for a minute. And uh, yeah, I was like, my next word was like, heck yeah, you know, I'm all in. I mean, growing up a college football guy, you know, uh, you know, being from Cincinnati, Roger Stallback is a, is, a, is, a, is a staple name from Navy that's from Cincinnati. So you heard a lot about, you know, the Navy program. And I, I, like I said, I grew up watching the Army Navy game. So when he asked me, it was it was a no brainer, you know, to be a part of history. This is historic academy and the biggest game in uh, one of the biggest games in sports of all, you know, man, you couldn't turn that down. So I was extremely happy. And what have your impressions been of the program now that you're on the inside, no longer looking from the outside? Uh, and everything I thought it would be and more, you know, definitely from the uh, the student life, you know, uh, didn't know much about that part of it, you, you know, and what entails in the everyday life of a midshipman and seeing what these young men go through, you know, it's, it's, it's really impressive. It's really, really impressive what they have to do uh, across, you know, a, a campus and, you know, the military aspect, the military part of it, and then coming and be a football player as well, too. It's, it's really blown me away. It, it really has. And and then just the football part of it, I mean, it's, it's everything I thought it would be from, you know, the facilities to great, being around great coaches, the tradition, uh, the administration. I mean, I work with a, a, a great group of people, not just in the football office. I mean, the whole athletic administration um, has it, been extremely impressive. What's impressed you the most over the years in your association with Coach Chronic and his offense? Ah, man, just from day one, just it, just him being a genuinely good person, a great person. You know, um, I was at Lenore Ryan two years before he arrived, and I was the interim head coach once that staff got let go. And, you know, he came in and he was extremely passionate. You know, I don't want to say passionate, but he had sympathy for us because he had been in that that, that, that position before being let go. And the first thing he did was pray for us. You know, I had never seen that done ever in my, at that time, 11 years of coaching and um, just him being a, a, a tremendous person and a caring person and, you know, but, you know, loving ball and being serious about it as well too, being a great leader, setting the tempo, setting the pace for the, uh, for the, for the coaching staff and the program. And as far as his offense, I mean, we took that, that league over by storm. Uh, you know, I used to tell people when I was out recruiting, you, you know, people always got it mixed up. Well, I think it's a triple option. It's nowhere near, it. nowhere near it. You know, it's more of a, we used to call it the sling T where it, it has, you know, uh, multiple of different offices, offenses within it, where you're going to get some up tempo. You're going to be physical. It's going to be spread. It's going to be wing T. It's going to have some option element and some pro style element uh, with it as well too, you know, throwing the ball down the field. So been extremely impressed and just, you know, uh, very grateful to be with Coach Cronin. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Not only is Roger Staubach from Cincinnati, but so is Napoleon McCallum. Yeah. And Jack Moeller is from Kettering. So three of the five retired jerseys in Navy are Ohio guys. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Didn't my know fact, that. One. My fact of the day. Yeah, I'm glad. Always learning. I love it, Scott. Thank you. <laughs> Wags. And so is Admiral Tom Lynch. The that was my captain. next one. Yes, Tap Tom Lynch is from Lima, Ohio, the captain yes. of the 63 Cotton Bowl team. That's awesome. So, Coach, um, your, your, your background's more defense. And when you look at your resume, I think you've coached D-backs most of the time. Uh, is this unique, going to the offensive side of the ball? And, you know, why did Coach Chronic, you know, trust you to, you know, make this transition to coaching uh, Snipes? Yeah. Um, it's not – too unique for me. Um, I played receiver in college, so I do have some offensive background. 
Um, the other part of it is, you know, once you know football, I was a special teams coordinator for 10 years as well, too. So it's a lot of carryover from the offensive side to the defensive side. Uh, stock blocking is extremely similar to making a tackle as far as, you know, you got to squeeze air out of the, of, of the defender and you got to get up on his toes. You got to get your hands in tight to make a block. It's the same, you know, thought process in tackling. You want to squeeze the air out. You want to, you know, be in a great football position. And instead of shooting your hands inside his breastplate, now you're wrapping behind and grabbing claw. You know, running routes are extremely similar to a DB coming out his break. You know, at the top of a break, you want to have your knees over your toes, your shoulders over your knees, and, you know, you want to get your face out the race and get back to the ball. Well, it's the same thing for a DB. You're just moving backwards. You want your shoulders over your knees, your knees over your toes. And when you come out the break, you want to have all that still in the same place, and you want to get your face out the race. And, you know, now it's a race to the junction point to who is going, you know, get the ball. Um, you know, so it, it, it's, it's, it's had some growth definitely because I mean, each position has its own little nuances bill, you know, but, um, it's been fun. It's definitely been fun. Um, you know, one reason I think coach chronic, you know, asked me to come with him is cause, uh, he knows I'm a good coach, you know, and then he knows I'm gonna love these kids just as hard as I'm a coach. And that's extremely important when you're developing a room, uh, young people have to know that you genuinely care about them and their well-being. You know, they'll they'll trust you and they'll allow you to coach them hard. And he knows I'm a loyal guy. You know, um, I've been with him for seven years. You know, I had different opportunities to go be a head coach, to go be a coordinator other places. But, you know, I, I, I love Coach Chronic. He, he gave me an opportunity to stay and learn and uh, grow under him. And it's, and it's been tremendous. And uh, I love his family and he loves mine as well, too. So when you talked about the Snipes, what's going to be different um, for the average fan from what the slots did in the triple option to what Snipes will do in the sling T? You'll see them. I think you'll see them run routes a little bit more um, than what you have in, in, in the past in the, um, in the triple, in, 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 in the, uh, the triple option, you know, out of the double slot, you'll see him lined up in different places where, you know, the, he could be out at the one spot removed. He could be in the slot removed as well, too. You know, they'll run more of the route tree. They'll run almost every route in the route tree from a hitch to a curl to a corner to a go route. Um, so I think that would be a little bit different. You know, you'll still see us loading the box. You'll still see us arcing, you know, on, on uh, flat defenders and safeties. But I think that's what's going to separate us a little bit. Uh, that's going to make us different. So one of the things that was an issue here recently was when they eliminated cut blocking on the perimeter. In this offense, is cut blocking, I mean, the, what used to be required for cut block, is that an issue? Or does that kind of eliminate, does the new offense eliminate that issue? Because with a triple option, when you made the pitch, you had to execute that block. And the inability to cut made it more challenging for the slots. Do you, how do you th see things differently in that regard? I think it made it an issue for every position, not just the slots. I mean, old linemen can't cut no anymore. Receivers can't cut running kids down the field, you know? Uh, so I don't think it's going to be a, a, a real big issue. You got to find ways of the game is always evolving. So you got to find ways to be successful. So, you know, I don't think it's going to be an issue. You know, um, we just got to We got to continue just to, to find ways to be and be creative to 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 you know equalize going against guys that may be a little bit bigger than us you know we we were a wing t offense we had wing t elements at lenore ryan and mercer and we were cutting there the rule you know uh implemented while we were still running this offense and we just adapted and kept on pushing forward so i don't see it any different here So for during the triple option era, Navy was able to recruit a lot of very undersized slots. Guys, five, you still got them around, five, seven, 160, that type. Do you feel moving forward in this offense, you need to recruit a different body type for the snipe? I think um, you can still use those guys. I think they still have a role. You know, they have to be extremely dynamic, like the young the kids we have right now. They are dynamic players. Uh, you know, we would like to get a little bit bigger and longer. Um, but, you know, I still think those guys still have a place. You know, I'm extremely excited about the the five, six, five, seven guys we have here. They're, they're, they're good football players. Um, but, 
you know, I, I think they still they still do have a role with us. Yes, I do. But I think we want to get bigger, longer in, in that position moving forward. So uh, I'm out of practice a lot, and every time I'm there, our Eli Heidenreich makes a play. Yeah. Um, he was a good player last year. I think he's going to be even better this coming season. But what what is your impression of Eli Heidenreich so far? Uh, good player. Just like you said, I echo everything you just said. He's a, he's a good football player, tough nose player from Pittsburgh to Steel City. Um, like I said, I recruited out there for 11 seasons, so I'm extremely familiar with you know Mount, Mount Lebanon is high school. I know what type of players they put out. Uh, I think he's going to continue to grow. We, we're working on just you know um, tuning, fine tuning those details as a route runner, as a ball carrier, as an overall football player. Just continuing to grow his IQ. So. You know, we want to we, we want to take Eli from good to great this year. Well, it seems like he has got the versatility that you're speaking of, because I've seen him lining up as basically a wide receiver split end, as Coach Cronick likes to say uh, <laughs> quite often. Um, he's out there wide, which he didn't really do in the previous offense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's a he's a really good route runner. You know, he has a. a, a a good skill set to be able to, you know, flank out as a split in and run the route tree. And he's big enough to run between the tackles and he's fast enough and uh, fluid enough to run jet sweep as well too. So, you know, he's, I like to call him our Debo Samuels. You know, he does a little bit of everything for us. So, uh, you know, extremely excited to work with Eli. You know, he's a f smart football player and he's fun to be around in, in the uh, position meeting room as well too. I like that Debo Samuel reference. I'll have to use that. Um, <laughs> what about Brandon Chapman? He's showing you some things. Yeah, yeah. B Chat, man, is, is a, a extremely tough player. Um, had a little ankle injury, bounced back from that. You know, we just got to put some weight on him so he can, you know, I call it body armor, continue to build his body armor. So, um, you know, because he plays extremely tough, you know, that he can last throughout the whole season. But extremely, once again, extremely fluid young man. Runs good routes, uh, you know, runs between the tackles well as well, too. Has good vision. So same thing. I'm looking to take him to help him move from good to great, you know. And all my guys are – I love them all, man. They are they are extremely fun to be around in, in the position room and on the field and off the field. Who else has caught you? I, I, I talked to Coach Chronic on Saturday, and I think Isaiah Bryant had made yeah. a play, so he mentioned him. Tyler Bradley is a guy that's made some plays here and there. And, of course, your veteran guy is Amin Hassan. Yeah, all, all three of those guys you mentioned. I mean, Isaiah, is a, as a freshman, um, has is, has made tremendous strides. He is a is a very intelligent football player, high, high, high football IQ. And um, he's just continued to make plays, you know. He's, he's continued to impress us on and off the field. He gained 10 pounds in the weight room, which is awesome. His body armor is building. T. Bradley has done some really good things as well, too. Uh, and uh, Amin is just that wily old veteran, you know, uh, good for the room. He, he's the he's the old soul in the room. So I, I definitely appreciate him and his role. And he's, he's shown a lot of uh, maturity and, you know, high football IQ as well, too. So I'm excited about my group. I think I got a really good group. I think we're going to continue to grow and, and uh, mature. And I'm, I'm excited to see what we do um, in, the, in, you know, in, the, in the summer and then moving into the fall. Glad you're muted. You're muted. Sorry about that. Wait, you mentioned snipes. Um, when Coach Chronic uses that term, why do you think he likes that term as opposed to slots? Well, snipes is a, it's a term that I, I coined. And uh, it was actually a DB term. You know, we made it up at, uh, well, the kids made it up at Lenore Ryan. We were just trying to find an identity and something to kind of set us apart because, you know, before I came to Navy, I always looked at football team as a, as an army and each position is its own, you know, company or platoon. And, you know, I just wanted something unique for our guys. And, uh, they came up with elite snipers and I was like, that's kind of long to say all the time. So they just, you know, shorten it down to snipes. And I think it kind of fits, you know, the military aspect here as well too. Uh, and it, it's a pretty cool to, you know, to yell out when we're out on the field. So, um, it's really a fraternity, you know, that, that we're, we're growing. So it, it involves, it has DBs in there. I was a special teams coordinator for 10 years, like I said. So we have some, some specialty guys, some kicker punters, long snappers, and now we have slot backs 
as well. So, uh, you know, it's, it's a fraternity that we're building. Uh, we got a little mascot as well, too, that goes with him. Um, so, you know, I think it's just fun as well, too. It gives the guys a sense of identity ownership. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Uh, back to Scott. Coach, now that you're on the offensive side of the ball and you're coaching Snipes, the running backs, what is it like being at the hip of Coach Chronic? You know, I, I think when you were doing special teams or defense and that stuff, maybe you're across the line or maybe on the other side of the field. What's it like being with him every time he makes a call and every time that your guys get the ball? It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. You know, to, to see him work, to see how his mind works, uh, him putting plays together, thought process, you know, uh, really being next to him and watching him get after kids as well, too, and coach them up. So it, it's been it's been educational as well, too, to kind of understand the plays now, because, you know, on defense, you see him, you see him from a different perspective. But now I'm learning the, all the little nuances within the plays and the offenses and the motions, the shifts. Um, how they all tie together and play off each other, the system that we put in. So it, it's been extremely fun and, and uh, extremely educational, <laughs> to tell you the truth. And how is your relationship developing with head coach Newberry? I think pretty well. I think it's going well. Uh, coach Newberry, man, he's a, he's a, he's a tremendous guy. First off, tremendous freaking guy. Uh, you know, he does a great job of being organized and setting the pace and the tone for practice and how things are going to go as far as the coaching staff. Uh, I'm, I'm extremely excited to continue to learn under him. You know, so there are two different styles is, of, of coaching from, you know, Coach Chronic to Coach Newberry. One's a defensive guy, one's an offensive guy, and you can kind of see that as far as how practice runs at times. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, going, it's going well. It's definitely going well. And what's the biggest takeaway that you want your new players to take from these spring practices as they go off for the rest of the summer before they come back ready to go in the fall? I want them to continue to just build on what we, what we, we, we started, you know, um, this is just the beginning piece, right? And, and we need the summer to be the, 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 the bridge and the bridge and the gap into the fall. So I want them to take away, you know, um, continue to work hard, continue to, to sharpen your sword, you know, to 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 home on on your craft, and we got to make the most out of each each day. You know, you can't take a day off. Thanks, Coach. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, finish this up. I forgot to ask about Anton Hall Jr. I don't I don't know that I've seen him out there. Is he sitting out the spring? Yeah, he got to take care of some things. He got to get done. Um, you know, he's sitting out, and you know, we're looking forward to hopefully getting him back in in the summer and in in the fall. You know, but uh, he had to take care of some things. He had to get done. Okay. What, um, in terms of you mentioned about coaching special teams, uh, slotbacks probably got to play on special teams. Do you oh, feel yeah. like you got a group of guys who are versatile enough to do that? I do. I do. Um, I think you, we got guys that could contribute on each phase. Um, you know, Coach Brown has done a good job of pinpointing some of the guys that he really likes, and it's, it's several of them. You know, we got guys that fit. You know the skill set that to be on the punt team, to be on the punt rush team, uh, to 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 be a returner on a punt team, a punt return team, or a kick return on the kickoff team. Uh, we got some guys that can run down for Coach Ukitis and and be a wild dog, as Coach calls them. You know, on the kickoff team as well too. So, um, you know, they definitely they they know they know from when I when I first took the took over the room, I told them we will play special teams. You know, we will contribute in that way. And a lot of guys understand that may be their way onto the bus to travel as well, too, if they're not in the too deep. Um, you know, special teams is extremely important, extremely important. Uh, so, you know, I definitely think I, I know I got a good group of guys that can help and contribute in that phase. So when we think of the slot back in the triple option, it's, you know, going in tail motion and taking the pitch and then, you know, or, or running certain routes like a wheel route. Uh, do you think it's going to be a dramatically different? Will they still go in tail motion and take a pitch once in a while? Or is that out the window? No, nah, no, nah, they'll still, still, if you've been at practice, you've seen like they'll run, they'll go in, in what you call tail. We call it or a Zorbit or apex motion. They'll go in, they'll go in motion. They'll take the pitch as well too. They'll, they'll still run routes. You know, they'll run the wheel route. Like I said, they'll run the route tree. So, you know, it's going to be still the same elements of the triple option, the double slots. We're just adding to that, giving it a little bit more, uh, being a little bit more multiple. So has it been a fairly easy transition for most of the veteran slots who were 
brought up in a triple option system to make, you know, learn this new offense, or are they swimming, you know, give whatever they say, it's, uh, breathing through a fire hose? <laughs> nah, nah, no, no one's drinking out of fire hose because what we're doing is what a lot of these young people did in high school, you know? So, you know, a lot of guys ran inside zone. They were in the gun. They ran the route tree. You know, some of these guys were slot receivers. And when they came to Navy, you know, they were made, you know, slot backs. So some of them are just like getting back to, to their roots, as you, you know, you know, people would say. Um, so, you know, it has been a learning curve. It has been a learning curve. But we've had we do have some elements that have carried over uh, from previous years. So we just, you know, because we have coaches that, you know, were on the staff last year and previous years as well, too. You know, Coach Jasper, uh, Coach Lauren Dean, Coach McDonald, who was here, you know, who's our player development um, coordinator right now that, you know, tell us, well, hey, this was this word for that or this is how we did it. So when we're in the position meeting rooms, we can use that to help them understand like, hey, this is just this motion that you guys done in the past, or this is what we y'all have done in the past to really help, you know, bridge that gap. So um, it has been a learning curve, but yet we've had been able to have some carryover uh, from previous years as well too. Hey, Brandon, thanks a lot for joining us. How have things been going for you so far in the spring? I think they've been going well, you know, we had a long long uh, off season getting ready to get back and i'm just glad to be back playing spring ball so it's great what was it that you learned during the season last year that you're working to improve on and working through now in the spring that you thought was important uh i would honestly i would just say like one of the biggest things was getting used to the speed of college football because i mean you you come to the realization that you're fast and everybody else is fast too so you got to work on those little things like explosion and getting out of your breaks and making that little bit of separation because it makes the biggest difference. So so you learned to do that in the triple option, and lo and behold, you're now playing the uh, sling T. What are your uh, impressions of the new offense, especially for you and your position? Uh, I honestly like it. Like, it's it's, it's – there's, there's similarities to last year. Like, it's a big mix of plays. We didn't get deep into our playbook last season, but I feel like we're really starting to open it up and – Coach Chronic, he's a really confident coach, and and I, I really believe in offense, so I feel like we can make some things happen with it. How do you like the fact that you can get into – seems like you can get into a little more space in in this offense as a slot back. Do you like that? Yeah, I do like that because you give me a little bit of space, it's over. So, I know uh, your position coach uh, likes you guys a lot. I know you guys are nicknamed the Snipes. Uh, yeah. But they also said uh, they were looking to make you uh, just a, a little bit, uh, I guess, leaner. Uh, so, you know, get in there and, and maybe avoid some of the injuries that uh, played you. Is that something you've been working on in the weight room and things of that sort, even yeah, uh, at the lunch, lunch hall? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Getting stronger and, you know, just, just eating more than I've been eating. They're trying to get me up to 175 just so I can be more durable and do what I do at just a higher level. So what do you think? that you learned last year that you think is going to help you the most this season once you get back in the fall, uh, once the uh, the snaps get live? Uh, I feel like I became, like, more familiar with, the like, the different defenses because I feel like, like, recognizing the coverage and, and studying film and studying your opponent, like, makes a, makes a big difference. So I feel like having that knowledge will help me get into a more open space on top of the space that they're already getting me into, so. And do you think coming back? Do you think coming back in the fall, having completed both your plebe year and your sophomore year, that also on the yard in the classroom, that the familiarity there is going to help you be able to maybe focus maybe a little more on football? Hundred percent. Because when you first come in, it's a it's an adjustment that you have to make, and and sometimes that takes time. But as time goes on, you get in a routine, and then you like you you take less classes in your matrix, so it just makes it it makes it a lot less of a load. What are your plans for the summer? Um, we're here all summer anyways, you know, for workouts and football and everything. And then second block, we have mandatory summer school. And then while we are here and we don't have summer school, I will be taking the summer school class just to get ahead of everything and make things lighter during the season. And you also Great. have Thank military, you. You also have military training, zero block. What are you doing for the, for zero block? Um, we're going on a we're going on a surface cruise. They haven't told us if we're going to 
Mayport or Norfolk yet, so we're still waiting on that. But yeah, we're going on a surface cruise, so I'm also looking forward to that. It's shortened, but looking forward to it. That sounds pretty cool. Thanks. Wags. Brandon, what has been the biggest adjustment to the new offense for you, slots slash snipes? Uh, I would say the biggest adjustment is you know, having having to do the job of a be back because like part of their job is running to a hole that's not there. And we have to do that at times. So it's just getting used to reading the D line because we're used to reading DBs and safeties and maybe linebackers, but having to read the D line and the linebackers is a whole different beast. So really adjusting to that. How has that gone for you so far running between the tackles? That is different. Yeah, it is different. I mean, I think it's going well. I try to be, I mean, if you don't get touched, then it doesn't affect you. So that's my mentality running through the hole. You think some of the skills that you learned while you know operating as a slot carry over to this new position? Uh, definitely. I mean, it's it still is a lot of a slot, but I mean, the skills definitely carry over. Uh, we we also learned some new skills with Coach Cole running through the blaster and working on the bag, working different different types of moves. So it just becomes instinct when we're running through the hole. The coach had mentioned that you all have, you know, you're running a, a wide range of the route tree. I think a lot more routes than you might have, you know, re, re, you know, run during your as a slot back. Is that something you enjoy? Different opportunities, get downfield. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I coming out of high school, I was a slot receiver, and that that was really fun to me. So being able to do both, that's a great opportunity. So do you think that this new the the position the snipe the the changes that have occurred is that a lot like being a slot receiver at the high school level? Do you think? I think so. It's a it's a lot more. There's I mean yeah, there's a mix of running and a mix of passing, but I feel like we do open it up open it up a lot more, and there are a lot more routes that we can run and and allows us to get into our bag and you know make things happen. So it it is similar to being a slot in high school with the mix of being a running back. So. We got got the best best of both worlds. So you talked about Coach Cole. Obviously, he's new to the program. How I don't know, how are you all enjoying him as a slot backs coach? We had a talk with him just now, and he seems to be enjoying coaching you guys. Yeah, he's a very personable coach. You know, like very cool, makes jokes, and just makes it like a calm, calm, open environment. And then when even when we get on the field, like you know, he's a hard coach, but I feel like that's what you need because, I mean. Like he's hard on us and he 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 cares. He shows us that he cares. And I feel like he builds like a good relationship with us off the field and it translates to on the field and just makes you want to listen to him and follow his leadership much more. So I believe you've had three slot backs coaches in three years, if I am correct. Coach DePay, then Coach Thomas, and now Coach Cole. Has that been difficult to constantly be rotating coaches? Uh, I mean, in a way. They're all three different types of coaches, but I mean, having the military perspective of things, things change all the time. So you kind of get used to adjusting and adapting. So. so what did you want to work on as you came out of last season? I'm sure you sat down with Coach Thomas at the time and he told you about some of the things you've got to improve upon to be a better at your position. What were some of those things, Brandon? Um. Some of the, I mean, some of the main things that they said they wanted me to work on. Well, one is like, like just my moves in general. Like I, I've, I've, uh, did. I mean, I had success make creating separation, but you know, there's always more. There's always more that you can learn. And then, like, like the main thing that they wanted me to improve is just like my weight because, I mean, I can, I can, I can make people miss and I can break tackles, but with 10, 15 more pounds, that can, that can be like much more success. You know. So uh, obviously Eli Heidenreich's a guy that had a lot of success last season, and when I've been out of practice, he's been making a lot of plays. Is he a guy that, even though he's you know your age basically, is he a guy that all oh, everyone in the room looks up to for his based off his performance? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, we only have uh, three to four slot backs in the room in general that have played, and me, me, Eli, and Amin were like uh like the ones that played the most and then so like they do look up to us but they do especially look up to Eli he's made a lot of plays and and he's well respected through the coaching staff and through our position group and the team so thanks Pete Matt Hurst 
Brandon, you guys obviously have more opportunity here, um, and you're really only at the beginning of this install. Is it exciting about the potential of what you guys may be asked to contribute to the offense this coming season? Yeah, it's very exciting. Like these past couple practices, I feel like we've moved the ball on the defense and had more success than we've had since I've been here. So it's it's, it's exciting. At the same time, as uh, Bill alluded to in a previous question, is is it the different voice that's the challenge when you have different coaches, or is it the install of the new things that you know? While many of the differences may be subtle, those detailed things, as you know, mean everything. Is there is there a high degree of difficulty in that, or is that just making those subtle changes at a position you're clearly already familiar with? Uh, I believe it's making uh, subtle changes because, like, they're they're really big on the small details. Like, you can you can make a play and you can do everything right, and they'll split hairs. And there's nothing wrong with that because, like, you know, the little things matter, and they want things they want things to be as perfect as they can be. So, like, even when we make good plays, they can point out they can point out the good, but they can also point out the things that we can do better. So that it's not not even a question. Is it easy to erase a previous season? Because I know you all as a team feel you left some things out there. Is it easy to erase that and turn the page to a new season uh, like this? Or is it just something, you know, some of the lack of success of last year that fuels you all as you begin this journey now with spring practice? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's not, honestly not easy to erase it. Like, you know, many games we, we left a lot on the field and, throughout the season got tired of hearing like oh like we we were like like an inch away or one play away so you know we we carried that momentum into the off season and we trained we trained and worked out hard we went through fourth quarters and everything and and we kept that chip on our shoulder you know coming back ready to make a difference next season so we didn't just wipe it away we used that as fuel the best locker rooms are player led do you see that hunger amongst the players in that locker room uh as you all are just starting out and and having them realize, hey, everything that we're doing in the spring means just as much as everything that you will try and accomplish in the fall? Definitely. I mean, new coaches coming in, they're harder on us. But even even before that, like everyone's been hard on everyone. Like a lot of people don't understand how much it how much it hurts, you know, losing my inch. And that's more than just Army game. It's a, it's a couple games, you know, th those are the ones that hurt, hurt worse when you gave it your all and you pushed all the way to the end and just came short. So I feel like, you know, all the all the mainly upperclassmen and there's some uh, younger guys that are starting to speak up. But, you know, everyone's coming together and just trying to make this a player led team and, and, and harp on the little details. Awesome. Thanks, Brandon. Problem. All right. We'll make one more trip around. Uh, Scott Wyckoff. Yeah, Brandon, just one more for me. I know you love football from talking to you last year and from seeing you play and talking to you today. What is it that you like the best about the military aspect of being a student at the Naval Academy? Uh, honestly, I just feel like it's the opportunities that it provides. You know, I don't I don't come from the best situation and a lot of kids from where I'm from don't make it out. You know, a lot of my friends had worse situations than me. So, you know, just the opportunity to, you know, get away from home and have the opportunity to change my family's life and play football at a high level. I, I feel like that really, you know, makes a difference to me and my family. And it allows me to show, you know, younger kids from later generations that it can be done. Is the military academy just a, an unbelievable place just being on the yard? Yeah, it is. I mean, the yard is beautiful. And then, like, there's honestly, like, no place like it. Like, you can go to a thousand college campuses, and I feel like you won't find any place like it. Thanks a lot. Of course. Wags. Can you talk about some of the younger slots that may be Showing up, I think Coach uh, Chronic mentioned Isaiah Bryant, and uh, I think uh, you know. Um, uh, oh God, I'm going branded here. Let me look at the roster. I mean, Tyler, Tyler Bradley, Tyler Bradley. Yeah. yeah. Can you mention some of the other? Who else has impressed you amongst slots beyond the guys that have played that you mentioned yourself, Eli and Amin? Um. Yeah. Um. Definitely. Definitely. Tyler Bradley and Isaiah Brand Bryant. We seen a lot of Tyler last year. He was a. a starting kick returning so he got to do some stuff and then even he got he got in the game a couple of times and he made some plays and I feel like you know like he he's a really like small but solid guy and I feel like he he makes plays and then Isaiah Bryan he's small but 
Like he, he'll really surprise you. I feel like he he's really going to be a problem. And then you know we have a uh, we have we have Jack, we have Gage. We like I feel like just like the room in general, we have a bunch of bunch of solid snipes, and I think that room is going to make a difference on the field. We all have the ability to go out there and make plays. There was a lot of talk about you know not being able to cut block anymore, and that that made it hard to run the triple option because when the slot backs took the pitch, they didn't have somebody who could cut a D-back or whatever. Is, in this offense, is that less important, the whole cut block situation, those perimeter blocks? The cut block is just a bump in the road. You know, we can't – I mean, we couldn't cut last year. They 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 changed that rule. But, I mean, like that goes back to harping on the little details. We do bag drills and we go – we go and block on the sled and we work on we work on our blocking and going down here and blocking so we don't – you know, so we don't even have to worry about cut blocking too. All right, thanks a lot, Brandon. Appreciate your time. No problem. Pete, take us out. Brandon, just one more for me. Um, besides the obvious, having speed, having good hands, not putting the ball on the ground, being able to catch it if they throw it to you. In, in your mind, what's the most important thing to being successful as the slot back uh, within this offense? But like it's just a mindset, you know, like like you can you can you can teach and coach hands and routes and stances and everything, but you you can't you can't teach mindset and mentality and like what you have inside and that's it's more than just being a snipe that's just that's just football in general you know like having having the next play mindset you make a play or you don't you know you got to move on to the next play cuz there's more plays to be played and you just you can't let you can't let one thing define you you got to be at uh, versatile and you got to face adversity well is there one trait or one skill that people would be surprised that means a lot in terms of the details of being a successful slot back? Um, honestly, I mean, <laughs> probably sounds crazy, but I, I think just like, like I would say like, you know, just to, just to like have a positive mindset, but like to smile. One thing coach Cole harps <laughs> on, you know, he tells us, he tells us six miles a day takes the problems away. So, and I mean, that's, that's where everything, that's where everything starts. You know, that's, like having a having a positive mindset to like smile and come out and and give you all that practice every day, and and then now you already have a positive mindset, so you going out to practice ready to work, and then just all the train just keeps rolling from there, and then it allows you to be successful. And I mean, people would probably call that a crazy trait, but I feel like it's actually a big thing because if you if you don't smile or you just come out there miserable, then you're going through the motions and. The train keeps rolling in a negative direction. And I think that's, you know, uh, important to keep the snipe position going. And then that just leads to the rest of the team.